So now with my application open and I'm online, let's take a look at the tags that are associated with the SafeZone 3 scanner. So I'm just going to right click and go cross reference by tag. That gets me the inputs and outputs. I can double click on those and that gets me right to my tag editor. Actually, I'm going to monitor those and just for display, I'm going to narrow it down to safe zone three tags only. So inputs are the tags coming in to the controller from the scanner. So you'll see that the primary things that we're going to be looking for here are our safety fields and our warning fields. Uh, those that are going to be there if a resets required if you're going to be doing manual resets within the scanner You might use those and, and then just some of the other diagnostic information Also important coming into the scanner is the active monitoring case We're going to want to know which case are we monitoring because as we saw when we configured We're going to have different inputs from the safety fields or the warning fields depending upon which case we're monitoring Output tags, what we're going to really be is doing case select. We're going to show you one of those needs to be on at a time. If more or if none, there's going to be faulting of the scanner. I will show you how I handled that. And we need to activate case switching in the event that we are doing case switching between multiple monitoring cases. Also, perhaps a reset and some other things there. But for this application, what I'm going to do is show you how those tags are used in a routine that I created called In Safe Zone 3. Uh, first of all, is the reset from the safety, if the device is faulted or application is faulted, we, we're going to trigger different resets. And also, this is just an AOI that I created. There's nothing really tricky about it. Essentially, it just says, hey, if I do a uh, integer selection of a monitoring case, if I go to two, just select A2. Um, and if I select one, then I'm just going to go A1. A2 and it's just a couple move statements uh, we can actually lo look at that and see the instruction logic but it just says hey if that's selected output the, the different cases and it also limits uh, the cases so if I have three don't select something else because the scanner is not going to want you to select a case that it is not configured to do so just if I'm equal to three output B1 like I am there and then just provide me some indication of what you're doing. So that's all that AOI is doing, is taking a digital input and writing it right into that safe zone three um, tag for A1, A2, B1, B2, etc. The cases that I have, if you remember, are we're gonna monitor the front left with a warning, front right with a warning, uh, both safety and warning. And then actually case three is going to be uh, just total, total front, front safety, left and right. So the next thing all I do is just for visual uh, edification, if you will, I'm going to take that active monitoring case, that uh, binary value, and just drop it into an int, just moving it in so it's easy throughout my logic to see what monitoring case I am. If you recall that for each of the different monitoring cases that I'm going to get a different input based on the safety it's output from the scanner, input to the device. So I, I need to decode that in my monitoring cases. So for left safety to be okay, it's got to be monitoring case one and three. And that safety field zero and one is the same. I just kept that logic the same so I can repeat it quite quickly. Also in monitoring case one, then if I get a field warning, that's going to say my, my left warning field is okay. So for each, really I have to decode that monitoring case scheme. So it basically says that whatever monitoring case I am, which field should I look at and what should I declare in my logics program. So for front right monitoring, I'm doing that. And then just for plain front, if I'm in you know the different cases, um, it's going to declare that as well. So I need to take a look at what monitoring cases, what safety inputs I'm going to be getting to declare a particular area safe or not. This final rung is just really confirming that, hey, if I'm in that case and I, and I am getting that okay, as I'm case switching, uh, the, you can look up in, in the user manual about switching time. So when I go from a monitoring case one to two to three, there's gonna be a little bit of time, right? Because it's a scanner, it needs to double check, it needs to switch to determine whether that newly monitored field set is actually safe. So in my application, I, it seems like a, I trended it. It's about a little less than 50 milliseconds because I turned all of my adjustments down quite low. But you're going to need, if you want to keep an active for that safe zone three is okay as you case, case switch, 
there may need to be some kind of a you know time off sort of thing otherwise you can just reset and, and go as you like but the, the concept is case switching takes some time and this output if I would just put safe the safe zone 3 output okay it, it just blips a little bit for a couple of milliseconds as we go through our case switching this tag then I just basically bring, bring to my main and say hey if the safe zones okay and my contactors are fine then turn on so I'm just gonna give my safe zone a reset a falling edge reset and you'll see that my main is now turned on you may have heard my contactors come on but as long as uh, the safe zone 3 is repeating or er, uh, observing that safety is okay they will stay on but it'll go off as you may have heard in the background you saw the blip and that's really all I'm doing for the logic so input is a safe zone scanner logic is just in your typical power up um, line is my safe zone 3 and a reset to bring the contactors on and the outputs are just simply contactors here for my ease of illustration so that is the basic layout of integrating the safe zone logic and tags into a program.